After you've downloaded Pro Tools and you've also installed and downloaded iLock, you're probably gonna be seeing the dashboard here. Name your track, whatever you wanna name it. So go down to your file type and make sure that this is a dot wave. Your sample rate should be 48 or 44.1. Have this at the highest possible bit depth. And then your IO setting should be default. Your location is wherever you wanna save the song. So then you're gonna click create. Then you're probably gonna see something that looks like this, except I have a couple tracks already made because this is how I'm sending out the audio to a different output for you guys to hear. You're gonna go to setup playback engine make sure that you're using the interface that you have i have it on pro tools aggregate because i'm using multiple outputs I usually i have it set as my uad thunderbolt which is my x6 if you have a focus right it's gonna say focus right 2i2 on your hardware buffer size i have mine set at 128 you can probably get away with lower if you have a faster pc if you have a slower pc you're probably gonna have to be pushing 256 to 512 and then your optimizations click and unclick these boxes to see what helps you if you're lagging a little bit and you're getting clicks and pops now we're gonna set up some buses because in order for us to route inputs and outputs between our tracks we need to have multiple open buses. So we're gonna go back to setup, back to IO. We're gonna click on bus, set up a new path and make like a couple, make like 10 stereo buses. And we already did that. We made like 50 of these. So we're not gonna do that. Click okay. Now we're gonna finally set up our tracks to record. So we're gonna create three mono audio tracks and we're gonna name it vocals. Boom. So we're gonna actually rename one of these recording mic and then we're gonna color code this red. So these columns are your insert. If you want to introduce any EQs and compression, this column is also your inserts. This is your sends and this is also sends. If you guys don't see this, you're gonna go to view, mix window views and make sure that you have inserts A through E, inserts F through J, sends A through E and make sure that these are all checked and make sure IO is checked. This is where we're gonna have our initial recording take go through. So we're gonna change the input of this. Interface should pop up. And for me, I have my mic plugged in to input one on my interface. You could check if you have your input routed correctly by clicking on this track input monitor, which is the solid line right here. And we could see that we have a audio level going through this indicator right here. After that, let's create a stereo aux input. You could also go up here to file and create new, but command shift N or control shift N if you're on PC is going to be a lot fucking faster. And I highly recommend you guys get used to the hotkeys already off the bat. Create a stereo auxiliary and we're going to recolor code this like a pink because I like my auxes pink. So we're going to take the three outputs of these tracks and make it the same shit as the input on our auxiliary track. So we're going to go to click on this, go down to bus. It's highlighted just like that for us. We're gonna click vocal aux, do the same shit for the rest of the tracks. Now we just need a track for our beat and a overall master for our print aux. So command shift N once again, boom, stereo, auxiliary. And then our name is gonna be print because this is gonna be our overall like master in bus where everything including our beat, our vocals, any effects, all that is going to be routed to the print. And I like to have my print bus like yellow. We are going to change the input, select the new one, one that's not highlighted. We're going to go with 1112. That's the next open one. And then our output should be one and two. We are just missing one track, which is our beat track. So we're going to go to command shift N again, control shift N if you're on PC. We're going to go to stereo audio track and name this beat. Boom color coded like a light blue we are going to change the output of that to the input of our overall print or master aux right here we forgot to rename our our print aux so we're going to name it print real quick and then reroute the output remember top is input bottom is output of our beat track bus print oh i forgot also on our vocal aux here we're going to also reroute this to the print as well if you don't see an audio level coming out of your print after you've record armed and clicked on the track input monitor on your recording track, that probably means you have one of your inputs routed incorrectly on either your aux or your print or your outputs on your beats or your vocals are routed incorrectly. I like to drag the beat 
track to the very top. One last thing is you're gonna wanna solo safe your recording mic. And to do that, you're gonna hit Command or Control and click on the S. And this should dole out this little S right here. And that basically means if you solo any of these, audio will still come out of your recording track. And you're gonna wanna do that same shit to your vocal aux and your print. If any of this is too much and you guys just want to straight up download the same template and then hop over to the recording section, you can do that by going down to the description, clicking on this link and purchasing my template like that. We're then going to import our beat, Command Shift I, or you're going to go to File, Import, Audio. Then we're just going to select the random ass beat. I'm going to scroll hella far down so hopefully nobody has used this beat before. All right. And then click OK. It's going to tell you to uh, choose a destination folder. I have mine going to the audio files. You guys can have yours going to audio files too. Processing the audio, clip list, and then click OK. The clip list is hidden, so we're going to go all the way to the right of our Pro Tools until we get this cursor to pop up. And we're going to double click, drag and drop this highlighted beat right here. Drag and drop that to our beat section right here. The beat is typically going to be hella loud when you download it. So just I like to turn it down by around negative six to negative nine dB. And then just to make sure we have everything routed properly, let's click play. So it looks like we're having our audio route out properly. We should see it in our print. All we now have to worry about is what we want to put on our actual vocal inserts. Very fucking basic vocal setup is I'll go here to the stock Pro Tools shit, the EQ, and it's the EQ7 band, EQ37 band. High pass filter, also known as the low cut. The low pass filter, also known as the high cut. And you could tell they're low cut or high cut because the low cut has a slope on the left side and the high cut has a slope on the right side. We're gonna activate the slope on the left side and we're gonna sweep the frequency to about 60 to 100. If you have a deeper voice, don't sweep this too high, but let's do 100 for now. I like to also boost the high end a little bit where all the breath and all the air is in your voice. Let's go like 10K. And we're gonna turn that up by a DB over here on the right side. After an EQ, I like to throw on a compressor. So we're going to go dynamics. We're going to use a stock Pro Tools compressor, the Dynamic 3 compressor and limiter. Honestly, the default setting is pretty solid. If I want a little bit of reverb, go to our sends here. We're going to click new track, stereo aux input, and name it reverb. On all of your sends, you want to make sure they are solo safe. Route this out to our print as well. On the insert, we're going to throw on our reverb. So we're going to use the stock Pro Tools reverb, the D-verb. Make sure that the mix is at 100%. What we're going to be using is this fader right here. If I turn this fader up, you're going to hear that my voice gets more reverb. Yo, yo, yo. So if I wanted to record with this, I would simply command space bar. Now that I'm recording, you can see that my waveform is getting picked up by this recording track right here. So I, if I was to sing an intro or whatever, I would go right here. After I'm done recording that section, command one is the zoom tool. Command two, cut shit and drag shit. Command three is the cursor tool. So I can insert the cursor wherever I need it to be. And command four is the grabber tool. Memorize these hotkeys. They're hella fucking important if you're trying to be quick so then you have all these on the left which is all your modes option or alt if you're on windows and then one is your shuffle two is your slip three is your spot and four is your grid usually i'll be switching between two and four before you even start recording if you have auto-tune auto-tune should go on your actual recording tracks i don't like to have those on my aux just because i like to have more control over individual takes so i'll go up here to my inserts on the actual track and then whatever your auto-tune you're using pro tools doesn't have a free one so you're gonna have to buy that shit so the waves tune real time which is this right here and then you're going to want to set the auto tune to the actual scale of the song. Tunebat.com slash analyzer and drag and drop the beat that you downloaded. We see that it's E flat minor, flat being this little B right here. And the BPM is 87. This is your BPM marker and this is going to be 87. So we're going to go here, E flat minor. 
and then you can mess around with the speed and the note transition. If I select it like this, this is like T-Pain auto-tune. And then the note transition is how fast I want the notes to switch through the speed of the auto-tune. And the speed is how fast do I want the auto-tune to react. We don't need that shit, so we're going to bypass that. But make sure that your auto-tune is copied and pasted onto all of your vocal tracks. Hold Alt or Option and drag and drop it to these inserts on your actual tracks like this. Then you're gonna want to find the first large transient to line up your BPM marker. So for us, it's gonna be this kick right here. I could tell it's a kick because it's really fucking huge. You wanna make sure that this BPM marker is as close as possible to this, to the first initial peak. Boom. Now that I have everything set up properly, I can then hit command spacebar and record. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm recording some shit. And then I hit space. And then I hit command four to get the grabber tool, drag, drop. I can hit enter and listen back to what I did. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm recording some shit. And then I hit, while I'm recording, the reason I have two tracks is just in case I want to punch in somewhere. So if I had this initial track and then I wanted to click on the timeline to punch in after it, another line, then I hit space, drag, drop. Keep doing the same process. Punching in something right here. Another line. I'm oxygen. Can we stop? Once you're done doing this for the whole track, you're just going to highlight your whole fucking timeline. And then you're going to go to file, bounce mix, name it whatever the fuck, choose a folder and export that shit. And then you have successfully made a fucking song. So that is how you set up a template. If you guys fucked with this, subscribe. Also, if you guys want my other template that I use for recording, that's gonna be up for download too. This template's gonna be up for download on my website if you guys wanna buy either or and support your boy. You guys don't need to. I clearly just showed you how to do it. Get into contact with me somehow and I will mix your song. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe.